Building a Stuart 504 boiler plant at part 9, fixing the boiler to the baseboard. The time has finally come to assemble the plant on the baseboard that I made. Originally I was going to mount the boiler to the baseboard using these four pieces of brass angle, but in the end I decided they didn't look good, so I'm going to show the alternative method that I did use. Some of these 504 boilers, I think the later models, had mounting lugs cast in and I've seen a few instances when these mounting lugs have been broken off because the cast iron end plates are quite brittle. I initially thought about using two pieces of brass angle bolted together and here I am on my small bandsaw cutting a piece of brass angle to make two pieces of brass angle to do the job. At this point I'd just like to say that this mounting method only works if you have the heat shield in place. I made a heat shield in a previous episode, so if you want to cross-reference it, you'll have to go back and look at some of the other episodes. You see the general idea. The bottom part of the heat shield that holds the burner is a flat level plate, and the entire heat shield assembly sits on the mounting screws that hold the side plates in position. Before rushing in and drilling the holes in the brass, I sat and thought about it and looked at it and didn't like it, so instead I cut a couple of pieces of steel bar. I won't bother showing you the bandsaw sequence, it's pretty much like the last one you saw. So here you see the final arrangement. A steel block will be fastened to the baseboard, and then all I need to do is drill this piece of brass, and here I'm marking the piece of brass out for just that purpose. And once the two holes have been drilled in these two pieces of brass, I can transfer these two hole positions onto the steel block. Then all I have to do is drill two holes in each block, and thread these holes 4BA. Over now to the drilling machine to drill the pieces of brass angle. I've marked out, and I use the term marked out very loosely in this case, the position for two holes on one of the pieces of brass angle, but you will notice that I haven't marked out the second one, because by duplicating the position of the brass angle in the machine vise, I can drill the hole in the same place. Like this. And for any experts watching, yes, I do know about the graduated vernier dials on the hand wheels of this cross vise. The problem is, a lot of beginners will not have a cross vise. They may have a machine vise in the drilling machine, but that doesn't allow for any adjustment. So as always, I'm trying to show a very simple and easy way to do the job without using numbers or dials or anything technical. In this clip, I've put the original piece of brass back in the machine vise and clamped it from the other end. And now I'm turning the hand wheels to move the cross vise into the correct position. And once again, this is a simplistic approach. First of all, I accurately position the point of the centre drill in the original hole. This is surprisingly easy to do. You can feel when it's binding and you can actually see the tip moving anyway. Especially on this drilling machine that's never really been accurate. And it's high on my list of priorities to get a new drilling machine in the new year. And the good news is, as it's currently the 24th of December 2017, 2018 is not far away. In this clip you clearly see that I'm drilling the other hole, and it's in line with the first one and it's in the correct position. Then all I have to do is remove this piece of brass once it's been drilled, and without moving the position of the cross vise, so I'm not touching the hand wheels you will notice, I simply fit the other piece of brass in exactly the same way. I'm using a scrap piece of wood to make sure the brass is aligned with the end of the vise jaws. Then all that remains to be done is to enlarge the holes with a twist drill. This is a 3 16th of an inch diameter twist drill, and when the parts are drilled, I can bolt them together using a couple of 2BA bolts, but I'm not going to do that. But instead, using a felt tip pen, I'm going to transfer the positions of the holes in the brass angle onto the steel blocks. This has to be done in position because I need to allow for the thickness of the piece of stainless steel which is the bed plate that holds the burner to sit between the steel block and the brass angle. In this clip I'm using a needle file because I always use a needle file as a scriber to just check that these holes have been transferred in the correct position. The general plan with these steel blocks is to use them to hold the boiler to the baseboard. So when I've drilled and threaded these two holes, I'll need to drill a third hole in each of the blocks to allow me to screw them down onto the baseboard. Normally, after marking out the pieces of metal, I would take them over to the drilling machine and use a centre drill to accurately spot the position of the holes. But I thought just for a change, I'll use a centre punch. A centre punch is a really useful workshop tool, but like most workshop tools, 
you need to practice with it. Now you might think, no, that's simple, just hit it with the hammer. No, it's not really like that. First of all, you tap it with the hammer very gently and then have a close look at it under a magnifying glass if necessary to make sure that the centre punch mark is precisely in the right place. If it isn't, because you haven't punched it very deeply, you can correct it by tipping the centre punch and hammering at an angle. And once you're happy that your centre punch mark is in the correct place, hit it with a hammer with a bit more force to make an indentation that becomes a guide for the twist drill. In this clip I'm using a 1 8 of an inch diameter twist drill to drill a hole all the way through the block. Why all the way through? Well it just makes it easier to tap and there's less risk of you having the tap break off in the hole. Plus you can use one tap all the way through because you don't have to change the type of tap to get to the bottom of the hole. There are basically three types of taps. Generally for model engineering you're going to be using these taps to thread metal. So first of all you need to know what the tapping size drill is. This information can be found in something called the Model Engineer's Handbook which is a very useful thing to have. But if you haven't got one of those or any other kind of book that gives you tapping sizes don't worry. Just go online and simply type in what you need. And in this case tapping size drill for 4BA thread. There is another way, if you don't want to be bothered looking in books and looking on the internet, to find out which is a good tapping size drill suitable for a BA or ME type thread. Here's an example and it works for other sizes. I'm drilling this metal block to take a 4BA bolt. So the first thing to do in this case would be to take your 4BA bolt and see what its external diameter is. And to find this out it's best to use a micrometer or a caliper. I'll give you a clue. A 5 30 seconds of an inch twist drill bit will drill a hole in a piece of metal that is a very good clearance size for a 4BA bolt. It's a bit of a rattle fit really, but 9 64th is almost dead on. And you don't want that, so 5 30 seconds, 9 64th, and you're down to a 1 8 of an inch diameter twist drill, which is a good tapping size for a 4BA thread. So just to recap, 5 30 seconds, 9 64th, down to 1 8 two imperial sizes down. Another example, if you were wanting to do the same but for the 2BA bolt, you need to go two drill sizes down from a nice clearance fit which is 3 16ths of an inch for 2BA. So this time it would go 3 16ths, 11 64ths, 5 30 seconds. Please experts don't write in on this one, I know it's not 100% accurate, but for jobs like this it's perfectly adequate, especially for beginners. I am not exactly a beginner, I've made quite a few steam engines over the years and none of them have fallen from together because the threads were too slack. It really does depend how you view things. For some viewers they will have the hobby of model engineering. My hobby is not really model engineering, it's a general mixture of all sorts of things. Model engineering is one of those things. But my hobby is not just model engineering for the sake of it. I use the tools in my workshop based on my personal experience to make models, generally repairing them these days or building them from scratch. So what I'm doing at the moment is using one tap to go all the way through the 1 8 of an inch diameter hole in the steel blocks. I've been doing this for some time, it took quite a while. And I didn't break the tap off, which is always a good thing. Breaking a tap off at this stage would not be good, I would just have to drill a new block. Oh yes, and buy a new tap, I forgot about that. Right, it's time to see if everything works. The holes in the brass are bigger than they needed to be, and this is on purpose. It isn't a bodge, the holes did line up perfectly, but I need to allow for some movement on the piece of brass so I can adjust it when I put it in position. And here is the piece of brass in position, and I'm pressing down on the top of it before I tighten the bolts, and this will firmly clamp the floor of the heat shield onto the blocks. It doesn't want to be too tight, and it doesn't want to be too slack. And just for once, I'll leave out the girlfriend joke. So where are we? How far have we got? What day is it? Oh yes, it's time to drill the holes to allow the steel blocks to be screwed down to the baseboard. And for this, I just need to find the middle of the steel block, mark the position, and then drill a hole all the way through on both of the blocks. In this clip, I'm drilling one of the holes in one of the blocks. I'm using a 3 16 of an inch diameter twist drill, and here's the other block. I'm going to countersink the top side of each of these holes to allow me to use a substantial wood screw to hold the blocks to the main baseboard. 
Time for a test fit of the blocks. The blocks will need painting, but I have to fit them first to make sure that they fit. In this clip I'm scribing a couple of scratch marks on the baseboard to show me where the blocks are going to fit once I take the boiler off. But if you're watching this, don't do it the way I did it first of all. I made a mistake. I scribed the lines and then drilled a hole on each of the lines. That was in the wrong place. So I do make mistakes. Anyone who's never made a mistake has never tried anything new. All I had to do was drill a hole slightly inboard of the original line and the block covers the original hole. These steam plants that I make are all prototypes so there's bound to be things that do go wrong periodically. But this is okay, it's all going together quite well. I've polished up the pieces of brass so they look as though they're designed to be there and here's the effect which is to me quite pleasing. I will be painting the steel blocks but I won't do that yet, I need to assemble the plant. That's it for now, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.